In this video, I wanna showcase how you can configure your on-premises vault clusters to use auto unseal using an AWS KMS key. Now, this is actually a question I get quite a bit from customers and students. So I wanted to create this video to showcase how easy it is to do. Now, this strategy will allow your on-prem vault clusters to automatically unseal when the vault service is restarted, whether you're doing upgrades or just patching the underlying operating system. Now, the one caveat I wanted to call out here is that you need to make sure that your vault nodes will be able to access the AWS API somehow. Now, that could be over the public internet or some other network configurations. So let's jump over to my vault node that I already have up and running, and let's go through the process of modifying my vault configuration, and then we'll migrate our seal over to use the AWS KMS key. All right, so on the screen here, I've got a terminal session open to a vault node. Now this vault node is already initialized and unsealed, and the configuration for this vault node is using our traditional unseal keys, right? We're not using auto unseal for this one. Now this vault node, I already have written data to, so vault kv get my secrets slash creds, and you can see I've got some data in here. I just wrote my name down there, all right? So the first thing that we're going to do in order to reconfigure this base vault configuration for the seal type is to go ahead and modify our configuration file. So if I go over to our configuration here, you can see the config here has storage raft, listener, and then I've got some other configs. I don't have a seal stanza, all right? And so that's what we need to add in here. So I'm gonna hit enter, I'm gonna add seal, I'm gonna say AWS KMS, all right, and open curly brace. And what I need to do is add region. So region, the entry here is going to signify where the key was actually created in AWS. All right, so in this case, I just used US East one because, well, who doesn't use US East one, I think. Um, and then we're gonna do KMS key ID. And then this is going to be the ARN of your key that gets created in AWS, right? This is just a regular KMS key inside of AWS. All right, so we have our ARN here, we've got our accounts, and then of course we've got our key ID here. All right, that's all we need right now inside of our seal stanza. The one thing that is supported is the ability to add your credentials right in this seal stanza. But we don't want to do that because we do not want to have our credentials in a clear text file. All right, so we're going to provide those using environment variables. So that's all we need for this configuration right now. What we're going to do is go back over to Vault and we're going to stop Vault. All right, so I've got my other terminal session that's actually just running Vault over here. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Now, the one thing I'm going to do before I restart Vault is I'm going to provide the credentials that Vault needs in order to access and use that key. All right, so I'm just gonna drop those in here as environment variables. Now this access key and secret key are attached to a user in AWS, and then that user has permissions to use our key. Now it's gonna have permissions for describe key, encrypt and decrypt just using that one KMS key, all right? That's the only permissions that we need. In fact, those permissions are showcased on an AWS policy that I have on my GitHub. So now that we've added that, we can simply start vault. So I'm gonna hit up and find vault server. All right, I'm gonna hit enter there. Now you're gonna see one of these logs right here real quick. Entering seal migration mode, Vault will not automatically unseal even if you have this auto unseal configuration, all right? So it sees that we've added this new configuration to Vault, but we have to do the migration first, all right? So let's go over here, back to Vault here. Now, because we restarted our Vault node, well, you should know that Vault's probably sealed, right? So we do a Vault status, right? It is initialized, but it is sealed. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the normal process to unseal our vault node. However, in this case, we're gonna use the dash migrate flag to initiate the migration from our unseal key over to AWS auto unseal mechanism, all right? So I'm gonna clear the screen here. We're gonna do vault operator unseal and we're gonna add that dash migrate down here, all right? I'm gonna hit enter here and now we just need to provide one of the keys, all right? So I'm gonna grab that from my other screen. I'm gonna paste it in here 
and we've got one out of three, all right? I'm gonna do that two more times because our threshold is the default and we need to do that three times in order to meet our threshold. So there's two and then I'm gonna grab one more key here and I'm gonna place that in here and hit enter. Awesome, so we've provided that. You can see sealed is false, we are unsealed. Now if I go back to our logs here, right, and I scroll up just a little bit, let's see, it should be right around here, and here we go. You can see that seal migration was initiated, migrating from Shamir to auto unseal, right, we're going to AWS KMS, seal migration is complete, and then it finishes unsealing vault. So now if we go back over here, again, we can do a vault status. We can see that it's changed to recovery seal type, all right, which is Shamir. Notice it doesn't say AWS because it's specifically talking about our recovery keys here. It says initialize true, that was never changed, but now we are unsealed, all right. By the way, the original unseal keys, when you perform this operation, your original unseal keys are now your recovery keys, all right? You don't get new recovery keys, but those auto, or those unseal keys that you're using before, now they are your recovery keys, all right? So they don't change. Make sure you keep those, all right? Don't get rid of those. All right, the one thing I wanna showcase now is that now that we have our auto unseal configured, if we go back over here, I'm just do a control C to stop our vault, all right? So under here, if I do clear, if I do a vault status, obviously it's down, right? So if I go up here and just hit up and restart it, before when we did not have auto unseal, we would expect that vault is sealed at this point. But if I do a vault status, you can see, boom, right there, it's automatically unsealed because it used our AWS KMS configuration to automatically unseal our vault node. All right, so congrats, that worked perfectly, exactly what we wanted. We just migrated this node from the default configuration of unseal keys over to using AWS KMS. Now the other thing I wanna mention really quickly before we wrap up the video is that if you're doing this on a cluster, right, in your production environment, dev environment, whatever, and you have a cluster that's made up of multiple vault nodes, you need to follow the same process on each one of those nodes, all right? So if you have a three node cluster, go to node one, perform this seal migration, cool, it's up. Go to number two, restart the vault service, right? Obviously update the configuration, restart the vault service, perform the migration, right? Go to three, update the configuration file, right? Add that seal stanza, restart the vault service, perform that seal migration. Once you've done across the entire cluster, you're good to go, right? That entire cluster is gonna use auto unseal anytime a vault service is restarted, it's gonna automatically unseal and vault will be immediately available to your clients. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you and you're able to go out and do this on your own.